Hi, my name is Sienna Winnick and I'm an accountant and business strategist for Keen Bookkeeping LLC. Excellent. Hello. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm very good. Um, another, another day in quarantine. Gotta love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good time. Sienna, what does your company do? What do we do? So we are basically CFOs to about 40 small businesses, mostly in the Massachusetts area, mostly medical practices. Uh, we basically um, do, we do the books, but then in addition to that, we pump out financial statements every quarter for our clients and use those numbers to direct, help the owners direct the business in the right direction. When did you decide to start, I mean, when did you decide to start the company and why did you decide to start the company? So the company started in 2016. Um, I had just decided to go back to work after being home with the kids for three years. I've been an accountant for 10 years prior to that, working for small businesses in taxes. And um, I basically just decided I wanted to work on my own time and my own hours and the rate that I want for myself. And um, it just kind of blew up to this big, uh, big thing for me and it's been really a blessing now and now we're up to four employees and um yeah we re we really enjoy what we do so you have four employees how are you finding these employees that's one of the things that um, i feel that a lot of people are hearing more and more now about small businesses not i mean they're just not thinking about how our communities are fueled by the individuals that live in our communities these small businesses so where do you find these guys and how did you how did you know that they were the right people for your company well, I have a small, small company. So my first employee actually was my first hire in my accounting firm. And um, she just, she basically, everybody, I feel like anything in business is about who you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, she really helped me um, when, we, when I first hired her in accounting. And um, I don't know, I just feel like the best hires are always, referrals from people that you know. So it's kind of where they're coming from. And, and they're all uh, mostly accountants. You know, the accounting profession's not an easy one and it's not a flexible one usually. So to have this remote bookkeeping job is kind of nice for, um, you know, for us. The, um, the individuals, are they, I mean, are they stay-at-home moms? I mean, do they stop? Uh, that traditional uh, book count bookkeeping, uh, did they stop that because they started a family or did they just decide, you know what, that big company is just isn't for me anymore? A little bit of both. So um, one of my, one of my employees, she came from a large corporate accounting job and um, she just wanted out, you know, the grind 60 hours a week working for somebody in a small office and dealing with office politics. You got that gets really old. Um, and then another uh, employee was also a stay at home mom, uh, left an accounting career to raise her children. So, um, wanted something flexible, and she's been very helpful for me. And it's just really nice to have such talent mm -hmm. and in the way that I need the help, you know, like the traditional 40 hours, 50 hours, like that's just not in any job. I just don't feel like how can anyone really enjoy <laughs> what they do when they're doing it so much of the week? No, it's, it's true. I mean, it's like, um, I feel that a lot of people, a lot of stories, a lot of um, uh, companies that I, I work with every day, they started their businesses because they wanted a little bit more control, actually a lot more control over how do they spend their days. And if they're going to spend that many hours on something, it better be their own. Right. Right. I mean, that's time. I feel like time more than money is the most precious, Thing you can have you know yeah. what you do in that time you know who cares about money it's just you know a thing but time is just so so important and especially you said the word time perfectly where we are living in the world of so much time <laughs> we have a lot of time <laughs> we have so much time on our hands so let's start with the industry like what is your what is the industry your industry looking like right now in the world that we're living in accountants we are uh, dying right now with 
you know, we're all trying to finish tax season, not like, let's not forget that tax season got extended to July 15th. Um, but on top of that, we're dealing with the PPP pandemonium uh, that started uh, at the beginning of this month. So account, I, we are just running ragged, you know, from the second we wake up to the second we go to bed. Uh, it's just, questions left and right. And, you know, now that most of our companies got the PPP, what do we do with the PPP? Okay, let's figure out the scenarios. You know, it's really hard to spend this money when you can't even open your office yet. And are we just going to pay people to do nothing? You know, so there's just so many questions we're fielding and pretty much every accountant is under this kind of, you know, you can't get your actual core work done because you need these companies to, to live past this um, quarantine. So it's just, it's, it's, it's exhausting. I'm, I'm thankful to be busy, but it's, it's a lot. <laughs> See, God, so the industry is definitely over, I mean, it's overwhelmed. The industry is overwhelmed over, um, overall. How are your companies doing? You know, how, what kind of advice are you giving them right now? Because you just mentioned it, where there's the loans, there's all this money coming towards small businesses, but yet everyone's still at home. How do I, how do I get into that situation where I can pay off this loan or it's like it's forgiven, but yet my doors aren't open yet. So there, there, it's like the hamster in the wheel kind of a situation. So what kind of advice are you giving to your team, to your team, as well as to your clients on how to handle the situation? Well, regarding the team, I just, I've made it clear from the beginning when this whole thing kind of went down, everybody was talking about unemployment, um, so that we just really need to be there for the clients. This is the worst time in, in a lot of people's lives since starting their company. Um, you know, things that you count on just aren't there anymore. You know, your staff isn't there anymore. Your income's not there anymore. So it's just really being a support to the small businesses that we work with. And we're very close to all of our clients. Um, and I think that really matters because I, I think if you're, if you're not close to your accountant, it's a problem and you can't really advance unless you have the right, um, unless you have the, be the best advice coming your way. Um, I was say, can you clarify that being close to your accountant? What's that? Can you clarify that being close to your accountant? Because some people don't have an accountant. So what is that? What does that really mean? Being close to your accountant. Being close to your accountant. I know what is going on in every single company that we have under our umbrella. Where there's 40 companies. Some of them have 100 employees. Some of them have one. I know what is going on in each one of these companies because we track them per quarter. Mm -hmm. I feel like every company should have, if you don't have an internal controller, if you can't afford an internal controller, you really need your CPA who does your taxes to kind of help step in and help you guide, guide you in the right direction. Be somebody who can answer your questions on how do we spend this PPP um, just have somebody tell you from your financials how you're really doing. It's like having that best friend that will tell you things you don't want to hear. <laughs> you know, like, I feel like everybody needs that person and that person needs to be an accountant. <laughs> I, always say, I always say that if you want to go jean shopping, you can count on me because I can help you out really well. <laughs> you always tell it like it is. <laughs> You know, the thing is, like, it's right, I mean, not even just right now, but we just don't have any bandwidth for people to kind of, I don't know, Mickey Mouse it, where, oh, it's going to be okay, it's going to be, it may not be okay. And so the more people you can have in your corner to actually tell you it's not going to be, or it is going to be, will be more, it'll be definitely beneficial for you in the future. Right. And I'm all about the facts. You know, people can talk all they want, but when I see something and it's a problem, I'm going to say, this is a problem and this is how we fix it. You know, there's no really need to freak out. You know, everybody freaked out when the quarantine happened, but now we got the money in. Now, how do we use this money appropriately? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like freaking out just doesn't help anybody. We all do it. It's a knee jerk reaction, but, uh, and that's why you need an accountant who's level headed. They will give you the facts <laughs> and just, you know, you, that's why you just, every, company needs a strong C 
CEO, CFO, and COO. And that really dr helps to drive successful, profitable companies. There's small companies that are out there. I mean, when I say small, 10 and under employees, they're hearing you have this conversation about CEO, CFO, CMO. They're like, I'm all of that. I'm everything. I'll, I mean, so who is that person that's doing it? And yeah, I mean, it's, it is easy to say it's a knee jerk a reaction, but we're scared. We're scared. I've worked on this company for X, Y, Z, how many amount of years, or this is like a family owned business. Um, what are you saying to them? Like, how do I take away the anxiety and then just really focus on what my needs are? Because yes, I'm getting that money in or I'm not getting that money in. How am I keeping my company afloat? And when do I think about it's time to either shut the door or it's time to um, our either I shut out the door or I'm that company that is getting so much business that I'm like, I'm overwhelmed. I didn't apply for enough money from, for loans and yet I'm getting so much business and I need more help. So, and yet anyone that I could have hired is now getting unemployment and they're getting paid more than I would have paid them. So how do you walk into a situation where a client that's either going to, or is either going to consider shutting down or the other client that's like, oh my God, I'm drowning in business. Uh, you know, it's funny because I have clients in both of those pools, you know, some, <laughs> this, <laughs> you know, some is, this is good. <laughs> it's funny. It's, it's really flip-flopped for some people um, it, it, in different industries, you know, all my medical people, you have to kind of see the patients and they've had to flip to telehealth. Um, which is something that a lot of people weren't expecting to do so quickly, but you know, we're, we have to adapt. And I think that's the biggest thing with being an entrepreneur is you have to adapt. You can't freak out or freak out for a second and then come back, <laughs> come back and let's look at the numbers and see what can be done. Uh, you know, I don't freak out until I see the numbers. And if I see the numbers and they're dipping below certain percentages that I want, and if I do a forecast and I, or a projection and just see that things aren't forecasted great, we just look back and see what can we scale back? What can we cut? How can we prevent this going forward? You know, one of the biggest lessons out of this PPP that I keep ranting about is how big, big banks have really let let down their customers you know they were bank of america was the first one to get their portal up i was so excited we got the clients in still crickets i mean it's awful but the heroes in this were are the small banks so what's the lesson here is we need to spread out the money <laughs> you know we can't have all our money in one bank it doesn't make sense we have to spread it out and so that's what we're working towards now is you know what is the problem now and how can we make it better going forward that is like and it's also going pick one thing at a time because if you look at everything as a whole yes everything's crashing to the ground but if you pick one thing that's actually the most important thing and focus on that then 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 you can make progress and feel like you're making progress you know mm -hmm. as for the scaling problem um i just tell people it, it's important to say no if that person, if you're saying yes to everybody just because business is booming, you're going to get burnt out and it doesn't help anybody. Pick your certain clientele that's your ideal and serve them and tell everybody else um, you'll help them later if you have time. <laughs> you know, you can't help everybody. Yeah, that's one of the things where, I mean, I, I tell people all the time where it's okay to have a waiting list. I mean, especially the, during this time, I mean, the Oprah effect is happening. Everyone's hearing the word small businesses. Everyone's hearing support your small businesses. This is like, this is think about um, the support your small businesses at Christmas time times 3000 for a lot of these businesses where everyone wants to help where they can um, with Easter, with Passover, with Ramadan, with Mother's Day around the corner. I mean, everyone is trying to find ways to support the small businesses and a small business is thinking absolutely fantastic. But at the same time, they're like, okay, I don't know what this is, what, what next week is going to look like. So I don't want to say no. And because I don't want to say no, I am going to be inundated. And yeah, like, I mean, for me, I always say like, you never want to get to the situation where other people start doing poor marketing for you. Meaning that I went to the store, they didn't have enough XYZs. I went online 
They didn't respond. And all of a sudden now you've lost that person for days and that person is not talking to their friends because when you hear the great companies that are doing things very, very efficient, everyone's running to it. And the ones that, the ones that aren't doing well, people are talking about it. Right, right. Negative publicity goes so far. It goes, it goes so far. very far. So, you know, I just think it's important for companies to do the best that they can to the quantity that you can. You know, we can only do that. The second you start stretching yourself is when everybody suffers. So it's true. Absolutely. So think about the individuals that are now home, like everyone's home, everyone's home. Um, some states are opening up their doors, but it's still slow moving. Uh, the smaller, smaller businesses that are not essential, they're still closed. But there are some people that their businesses are opening and they're like, kind of like to be at home. I kind of like doing my own thing. And they're thinking about starting their own business. What would you say to those individuals that are thinking about maybe it's time to start something for me instead of working for a company. And I actually liked having everyone at home. I like actually, and, and this, the kids are home until September. And so going back to work for a lot of people, that's another form of anxiety. So what would you say to someone that's like looking to um, start their own business? I love people starting their own businesses. I think there's nothing better than choosing what you do in your own time and choosing something that you love to do. Um, I think we all need to be realistic that business is always an investment. It's an investment of time. It's an investment of money. Mm -hmm. So we need, I, I, I'm not the best planner by any means, but I do think that it's important to have a plan of how you can still afford your bills um, and still accomplish and still work towards having your own company. I think, I, I don't know. I, I feel like this is the time when people reckon, realize who they are and what they want. I've been having a lot of conversations with people that just said, I never knew how miserable I was in my job until this quarantine, <laughs> but I'm like super happy. I, feel like I hear that over and over again. Like, I mean, it's coming up. <laughs> and I think that's the problem with, I think that's the challenge for business owners when um, they create these jobs. You know, now that everybody has had this luxury of so much free time, I think we need to start changing the jobs to make them jobs that make jobs that people actually enjoy, that they want to come to, that they're excited about. Um, that's, I feel like that's the problem with a lot of jobs. People aren't excited anymore. They're not challenged. They get no incentive to go. Yeah. Um, but now I think it's going to be a challenge for employers and then a, a good challenge because it only makes the companies better when employees want to be there. <laughs> but I mean, even if somebody's starting a business, you know, you just, you have to want this. You have to really be, have a lot of discipline, mm -hmm. have to work around what uh, priorities in your life. For me, I think a huge priority that's coming out of this for people is family you know, you know, nobody's ever had, if you work full time, both parents and you have kids, it's, you know, how often or how much time do you really get to spend with your kids? Two hours before bedtime. But, you know, now I think parents hopefully are going to make the, um, the, make the decision to work around the family, you know, because it's fun to be around your family. <laughs> well, you know, not a hundred percent at a time, but you know, but it's, <laughs> why do you have these kids? <laughs> it's really, I mean, people are definitely um, navigating creative ways. I, I think that week one, two, and three, it was just like a, like a shell shock. And yeah. now we're, now we're like strolling into week number seven. And they're like, okay, well, it is what it is. <laughs> right. Right. I mean, we're all ready to go back to work. We just need to go back. And this is what I'm, I'm telling people now, is especially we're making these plans to reopen May 18th, like so excited is that we need to make sure the employees feel safe coming back. We need to make sure the scheduling is right. So we're not all jammed in working together. Like there's just so many things that have to change, you know? Well, this is good that you just started that, 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 that uh, aspect of the conversation. Uh, this all ends tomorrow in a perfect world. It all ends tomorrow. What's your first day look like? The first day, uh, like no more virus. <laughs> I'm nope. going up to a very nice dinner and we're hiring a babysitter. <laughs> Personally. <laughs> um, but yeah, as for the businesses, I, I just, 
I hope that we all could just jump back into normal routines and having all the patients and customers coming in. I, I just don't see that being the case. You know, I think we're just, we're going to be changed forever because of this situation. So I'm a small business. Um, doors are opening. I mean, we're starting to see that. I mean, we're starting to watch it on TV where a lot of the small businesses are opening up. They're excited. Yes, we have to open. We have these restrictions. No one's coming in. Yeah. Uh, how are you preparing your, your um, employees for that? Not your employees, I'm sorry, your, um, your clients for that. Your moment. people's people. <laughs> Yeah, you're people, yeah. Because, you're I mean, people. because you're, I mean, they're, they're, they've done everything they possibly can to make sure that the, it, it's safe for their, their, their clients. They've done everything. And yet week one, we expected it to be slow. Week two, couple trickling. And week three, we're like, wow, dramatically different where people are still not coming. I mean, how are you preparing them for that? Or are you preparing them? Or I mean, how, like, what's, what does that look like for you? What's going on there? Yeah, that's what's exactly going on. You know, we have this PPP money and we're going to be paying the employees to essentially come to work and try to get back to normal. But there's probably not going to be half of the patients to take care of. You know, it's it's going to be tricky. I, I, so what we're trying to advise the employees is that, yes, you're coming back to work. Uh, it's not going to be the same. We're going to try to do some web, some educational webinars to fill in the times because it always helps to be, have more education. Um, we're going to try to just start documenting procedures that we've always had in our list of how to do things. So when, so when somebody walks into a job, we actually have instructions. <laughs> People aren't just winging it. And uh, we're just going to start thinking of new ways to market. Uh, it's, it's a different economy already. So we have to figure out different people you can serve that you may not have even thought about. Uh, I love it. Before. I love it. I mean, that's like, I mean, I think that's one of the moments that I say that this is a perfect time for you to pivot, to market and to educate. Um, and that making sure that they are educated and making sure that they can get more resources while, while we wait, it's like the waiting game. Um, again, time and waiting is like, it's our friend, uh, which is like one of those is a frustrating thing, but it's like, it's, it's really good because a lot of things that people, most of the people and most of your clients, they're running so hard and so fast. They probably didn't think about, Oh, I haven't updated this. I haven't done this. I haven't done this. And so this is like a great opportunity as long as they're prepared for that. So that's a good thing. Um, if you had a, a ask, if you had something that you were going to ask of people watching this, of people that are um, wanting to engage with you in any way, that want to get a little, they, they want to get a little bit more understanding of who you are, what would the ask be? You asked me this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what would my ask be? What would your ask be? My ask would be that um, people just learn to, well, as for me, is to just, me and what I do is just, I try to help educate business owners mm -hmm. on best practices. So I, I would love um, to be able to just help educate people about how to run successful, profitable companies. And it's actually, it's, it's all a formula. It's just educating people um, on how to do it. So I don't know if that's really answering your question, but is it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, what did they I ask? <laughs> well, it's all up to you in regards of, I mean, I always say that if this is, this is an opportunity, I mean, for anyone to hear, to hear you, an opportunity. So it's like, it's, um, it's up to you. It's whatever you want to say for the ask. <laughs> the ask would be for everybody to save um, two months worth of operating expenses at minimum as time goes on. I think that is so crucial to every company. We, a lot of us don't do that. We don't save enough personally and, and professionally. We, we just don't. And in times like these, it really would have helped a lot of companies. Thankfully, my companies are generally, uh, they listen, <laughs> they listen to me and, uh, everybody's in an okay position. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna make it through, but a lot of companies spend every dime that they make, which is not um, healthy. 
So that would be my biggest ask of everybody is to just be more conscious, save, save two months worth of expenses, save 30% for your taxes and we're, and you're going to be good. You're going to be good to go. Beautiful. Deanna, thank you so very much for your time. I mean, I really, I know you're busy and this like you taking some time just to talk is really, really good. So I love that you gave that like nice sound. It ended on a great note in regards of just saving because people are running fast and they're just not thinking about that. And they're just seeing things that they have to get done. And when you see that big pocket of money in the bank, you're thinking, well, what's really going to happen? And so now they're realizing this is what's really going to happen. So and that's why you need a good accountant yeah. <laughs> to tell you how much. <laughs> they do. They do. They do. Like everyone needs to get an account, a great accountant, a great CPA, just someone that's going to guide you. And yes, you're right. There's like a, a, earlier you mentioned where not everyone can have a full-time person, but you should have a person. A person. Everybody needs a person, a numbers person. A numbers person. Thank you, numbers person. Thank you, Jody. <laughs>